We've had 30 years of inflation in this country, and of course there are great arguments over whether inflation should be 6%, 8%, 2%, 12%, 20%, whether a little bit is good or it should be a lot. But the fact of the matter is that you cannot inflate, you cannot uh, issue a dishonest currency that erodes the purchasing power of the people in the country without paying a price for it, without having consequences, without creating dislocations, without confusing everybody as to how much money he has and what he can spend it for and what he can get for it. And, without confusing businessmen in the investments that they make and tremendi uh, creating a tremendous amount of investments in industries that really aren't top priority in consumer demand. All of these things have to happen and eventually the consequence comes. Governments have become much more sophisticated as time <coughs> has gone by and it's given them the ability collectively in general to prolong inflationary cycles longer, to keep the confusion running a little bit longer. But you finally reach a point where it becomes more and more difficult to sustain the inflation, and that's what we're seeing today. We're seeing massive doses of money pumped into the economy, and then massive retrievals of it in effect. They're not really taking it out. They're just slowing it down, and it creates the same thing. But this is what has become necessary as we come towards the end of the inflationary cycle. And if it were even true, which I don't believe that it is, that the stock market could drop without other things uh, paying the piper too, then who is to say that the government isn't going to step in when the stock market drops and say, look what's happened to unregulated free enterprise. Look what capitalism has done to us again. Boy, we can't afford a free economy of this kind. We're going to have to have greater controls, wages, prices, so forth and so on. A stock market crash because it's always equated with a depression as the cause of a depression would be the symbol or the signal to government to step in and say, look, we're almost about to have a depression unless we do something quick. And all of those controls and all of those regulations and all of the Federal Reserve policy will just serve to confuse the issue more, to bring uh, business and labor to a standstill. And people, uh, you will have unemployment because it will become impossible to work at the wages that are dictated, impossible to work at the, uh, uh, to sell at the prices that are uh, set by the government and so forth. So even if it were true that the stock market could drop by itself, that would only be temporary because the government would inevitably see to it that it would spread into the rest of the economy. And I'm not suggesting, incidentally, just in case I'm misunderstood, that there is somebody up there in government who's got his finger on a button and he just can't wait to push it and the button says depression and that the government is just anxiously trying to bring it on. What I'm saying is that governments misguidedly bring on depressions and governments misguidedly prolong depressions. <laughs>